Hey CG buddies, welcome back for the second part in this 10 tutorial. In this video, we will see how to add quick simple detail, how to use Substance Painter, and how to finalize a quick scene using Max. The detail I'm adding are very simple, but it's just for the sake of this tutorial. The first thing you want to do is, if you keep going from the previous file, you can just freeze everything you did from the simulation and use that as a template canvas. Or what you can do as well is simply export the simulation we did and re-import it into Marvelous as a simple object. What I'm simply doing here is just adding some more taps or other detail on top of each penetration between objects. I'm gonna leave it that way for now, but feel free to add more wrinkles in it. It's always a good idea if you want to add more detail on normals popping up from the lightning. What you can do as well is add some sort of rope connection or not really rope but a tap connection between all of the parts of the tent You can add holes in them, add buttons and everything you want I just wanted to show you that when you do a marvelous project you can always add lots of detail on top of it and then you can consider if it's done It's always a good idea because more detail you add more valuable is gonna be your 3D renders at the end
For some other details, feel free to bring back your object, whether in Blender, Maya, Trees, Max, whatever you're using, and start putting modeling on top of it. You can also use Boolean tools if you want to add holes in it. You can use textures if you want to add like tears into the top. You can do a lot of things here, so don't be stuck in Marvelous. Also, it's good to be back and forth. You can even use ZBrush if you want to add more detail on top of it. Before exporting to Substance Painter or Mari, what you want to do is check your UVs. So what I did is divided every color that you see in my paint is basically a UV. For that it's very simple, we have plenty of tools to do that. Blender is one of the tools, but what I'm using personally is Rhizom. I'm gonna do a tutorial on this for the next video.
now that we have exported our tent into Substance, what I always like to do is adding colors into my tent. Three layers usually, that's what I'm doing. So it's the color based on the final project that you're doing, on the final product. So for my case, my tent is kind of green sand colored. So I'm doing a green color. I'm gonna add on top of that a darker color and then a lighter color. And both of these colors are gonna have mask. Like, can be like leaks, dirt, spots, everything you want, but it's always a good idea. You see, I'm already adding details, but just applying three simple colors. You don't need to have gloss, normal, um, eight maps, everything else. So it's just color based for now. It's only when I'm starting to be happy with the color I applied and I did that I can do like a pattern, like a military pattern for this example. You can find plenty of patterns in uh, Google, so feel free to just take a picture, do a tileable map and import it into Mari, Substance, whatever you're using. Before showing you how to do the pattern, don't forget that in this example I wanted to do some sort of mosquito protective windows. So for this I used some sort of plastic with a high pump on it um, because I wanted something to catch the lights. So the normal is going to be really pushed high in this one.
also before doing the pattern texture, the military pattern, what I wanted to do here is adding a tarp, normal map textures on top of my tarp materials. It's gonna bring way more details on values, especially if you look closer. My example is quite far, it's not really a uh, hero prop, so it's not gonna be in the foreground, but it's always good if you want to add like simple like wrinkles, tarp material, tarp textures, tarp detail to bring that into the normal. And then here comes the choice of my textures. You have you can do like a winter military tent, a more tropical tent, a sandy tent. It's up to you. Uh, you just pick one that you like and I'm gonna show you what I did. I just imported this one quickly for the sake of the example. You simply add it into the diffuse colors or color base color that you're using if you're using roughness or speculars. And then that's it, you have a winter military tent. But for my example, let's stick to the sandy one. So I pick a more futuristic kind of modern one with like square patterns. And here something kind of my little secret that I'm using a lot when I do closes is putting some curvatures map on top of my models by using the curvatures mask editor. Just I duplicate the textures and I just make it lighter and it's gonna bring more values. It's like faking the wrinkle that we have into the model and it's actually very very good you can even use like an anchor point based on your normal or height maps this is just a mask to show you what i'm doing Also, there is something that I um, want to mention here. My tent is fairly clean. It's not new, not too old, but military stuff are always super clean if you look at the ref, because I know buddies from the military and they always clean stuff. So don't exaggerate too much when you do military stuff. I keep seeing people adding too much rust on dirt and it kind of looks fake. You can do if it's like a post apocalyptic or movies you're working on, a game or whatever, or something that got like abandoned for like months or weeks. But for my example, I still wanted something fairly clean, but still you can have slight detail of leaks because of the rain. You can have like some dirt, but based on the ground floor level, etc. But don't go crazy into the dirt detail because then you can tell it's too substance like and you can tell it's too fake looking so be gentle with this kind of stuff but it's also very hard to work on stuff clean that's why adding a little pinch of detail and dirt it's always a good idea but not too go crazy
And now what I'm gonna do is add some more normal on heat map detail on my tents. So as you can see, my painter process is very simple. You don't need to go crazy or complicated. You can, depending on the model and as well, like I mentioned, if it's a hero props. But for now, what I did, I just took pictures of like wrinkled papers I did, turned them into a normal map and just added it on top of my tabs to add more like light and shadow casting stuff. And here comes the funny part, so I added some ground inside the tent for people to be able to sleep or the table or whatever. My ground from Gaia. And then the funny part is adding the forest pack. So I have multiple forest pack here. I always use a bunch of forest pack. The first is gonna be some gravel. Then you have the grass, short grass, dead grass, more grass, high grass, flower, plants, more gravel, big rocks, and etc. Keep dividing your forest pack as much as you can and you're gonna have a better control. And also paint them because sometimes I duplicate one of my layers and I just paint it to a detail in a corner or in the bottom of the tent. I only used one LGRI for the entire scene. And as you can tell, what I did is just like a selection of the ground because we didn't need to go too far for this example so feel free to cut unused polygons so that's it you see fairly simple i hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot of stuff and see you for the next tutorial